Welcome to the Steroids Podcast with your host, Dan the Bodybuilder from Thailand. The Steroids Podcast is brought to you by Ultimate Guide to Roids, 109 page ebook by Dan the Bodybuilder from Thailand. Now, for the first time in bodybuilding history, you have someone with no corporate interests and no obligation to please anyone, not walking on eggshells to not offend. Ultimate Guide to Roids gives you the information, the whole information. The whole truth, not a full truth and a half truth, full truth. Ultimate Guide to Roids gives you the keys to the Lamborghini, gives you the information, and lets you decide what to do with it. It's a crime this information has been suppressed this long. Now let's get on with the podcast. All right, what's up? Welcome to a new episode of the Steroids Podcast. Dan the Bodybuilder from Thailand here. You guys know I've been in Eastern Europe during the whole, uh, you know, world apocalypse, COVID thing. So I do plan to return to Thailand eventually, you know, if uh, the, the world can go back to normal, which uh, it seems that the elite in the world are uh, bent on that not happening. You know, they, they want you to stay home and they don't want you to talk in person. They want you to wear a mask and they want whatever you say online the only way that they want you communicating to be censored okay so that's uh you know i've been running away basically from coronavirus restrictions because uh i don't believe in that i don't believe in that you know i know the, the the rest of the world believes in that some of you listen to this right now might think are you crazy well you know i'm not crazy and um you know, I have very good reasons for, uh, you know, thinking what I do, believing what I do. You guys know that I'm a, I'm a person who makes sure that they knows what they're talking about before they open their mouth. All right. From listening to the podcast. Same thing here. You know, talking about what we can and cannot say. That was one thing I wanted to start this podcast out with because I get a lot of, uh, feedback or questions people saying things to me like you know you can't talk about steroids or you can't say you use steroids because then you know you've admitted to a crime and you know so they're going to be a fake natural or they're not going to say that they're um you they use steroids you know they're going to say i'm natural because they're afraid that if they say that they use steroids, they're going to get arrested. And uh, I'm sure that people have thought about that with me before, too. Like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> okay. Look at rap music, okay? Look at rap music. What is rap music about? It's about selling drugs, taking drugs, being a pimp, uh, buying hookers, um, you know, doing drive-by shootings, um, killing, killing, you know, murder, you know, so what they're talking about in their rap songs is they're saying like, we take drugs, we sell drugs, we murder people. Um, you, you know, you, you know, we're, we're all about, uh, prostitution. So they're saying all this stuff. They're saying, we do this. This is our game. We do this. I mean, I mean, what the fuck is every single freaking rap song about? It's, it's always about hoes, money, drugs, um, you know, saying this is what we do. This is our lifestyle and they're glorifying it. OK, so just saying that you use something. That's freedom of speech. OK, so if you live in America, it's freedom of speech. If you want to talk about whether or not you use steroids. Have you ever seen somebody walking around with a shirt with a marijuana leaf on it? Well, aren't they saying that they use marijuana? Okay, so so with, with that that's not a not a good reason, you know, to to say like, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm afraid I'm going to get arrested. Um, you, you know, this world's a fucked up place, though. So you know, it's not like there's any justice in America these days, anyways. Uh, so basically, they, I, I mean, 
I mean, look at look at Julian Assange, WikiLeaks. He, he's in jail, and they're going to kill him. <laughs> you know, you can't... <laughs> for saying the wrong news. So, you know, it's, it's up to you. It's up to you, obviously, you know, whether you want to be a fake natural or not. But I'm just saying that, you know, if you are an American and you do still believe that you have liberty or you have rights or you have freedom of speech, etc., you should be able to say, you know, I take steroids, and then, you know, that's part of your freedom of expression, freedom of speech, to say those words. And uh, if, you know, some, for some reason you were to get in trouble for that, uh, you could always say, you know, that was a story I was making up. Because those were my words, and I have freedom of speech to say words so I can make up stories if I want to. It's part of being an American, supposedly. That, that's, that's my talk on, on why, why I, I don't think that you need to worry if you're an American or if you're somebody like in the UK. You don't need to worry about saying, you know, I, I take steroids uh, it would be better if, if everybody just knew, like, oh, you know, to, if you want to be a gym person, you take steroids. Because that, that is what being a gym person is, you know. Uh, actually, in some other countries that I've been to, the people have kind of reacted to me like, oh, you're a gym person. You use hormones because they kind of do know that. But in Western culture, actually, especially in, in Eastern culture, like a Slavic culture or Russian culture, the – Gym is associated with steroids, sort of like, oh, you go to the gym, you use steroids, which is the way it should be everywhere. Because, I mean, if you want to do bodybuilding, you have to use steroids. So, and it's not like steroids suck anyway. Steroids are fun. Steroids are good. They don't make you feel good, as, as in they, they don't get you high or something like that. But, um, you know, they uh, there's good parts to them that they can benefit your life and they can fuck up your life. And they can also give you gains. Uh, the ah uh, man, I, should I even keep on going about this? I'm thinking I should just move on to the to the next question. You know, I might come back to this. Okay. All right. First question is from Damien. Hi Dan. Just wondering, could I put one half of sterile grapeseed oil into the syringe with another half of test prop 100 milligrams per milliliter? is apparently to mimic the effect of 50 milligrams per milliliter where you get less pain. Thank you. Yes, you, you can do that. Adding sterile oil to your steroids in a syringe or something, you know, drawing up extra oil in addition to the oil that has the steroid that you got from the vial, um, just oil with no steroid uh, in order to reduce the, um, the post-injection pain and inflammation. But you know, really what you're doing there, you know, the milligram per milliliter content, if it's high, that is going to increase problems, increase post-injection pain and swelling. But the principal ingredient in the steroid that uh, causes that is having too much alcohol for sterilization and um, also the solvent that makes it be able to dilute in the oil. Uh, a lot of times the, the oil actually these days is an artificial oil. It's not a natural oil. And the artificial oil actually is a super solvent. And that's how they're able to get these super high milligram per milliliter concentration gears is because they're using um, artificial oils that are super solvents and can hold uh, in solution these massive amounts of steroids that a, a pharmaceutical product could never hold. You know, you should always go for buying products that are as close to pharmaceutical grade as possible. Buying high milligrams per milliliter gear is very not recommended. And it's kind of like, you know, you want to be like buying medicine. You don't want to be like buying drugs. You know, you don't want to be like buying bodybuilding drugs. You want to be buying medicine that you're going to use for bodybuilding. So that's why you want everything, you know, if it's not going to be pharmaceutical grade, then you want it to be at least trying to copy pharmaceutical grade. Not being this thing like uh, Power Muscle Hammer 360, uh, where, where, oh, yeah, you take this, and it's going to get you jacked and huge. And, and, and like, like being like, this is a crazy Extremo Muscle Builder product. Instead, you want to be like, oh, this is a medicine, and I'm using it for bodybuilding. You know, I'm using high dosages of it for bodybuilding. 
I'm using abusive dosages of this medicine for bodybuilding, but I'm still just using fucking medicine. I'm not using some kind of like product that was made for bodybuilders. It was made for medicine and I'm using it for bodybuilding, not the other way around. You're going to have a lot less problems, inflammation, pain, infections, etc. cetera, uh, doing that. Um, so yeah, when you do, di you know, when you do dilute testosterone propionate 100 milligrams per milliliter, 50 milligrams per milliliter, yes, you're diluting the hormone, but when you add in that oil, that extra oil, you're, you're only adding in oil. You're not adding in more sterilant. You're not adding in more solvent. So you're diluting the steroid hormone, the ster, uh, the solvent and the sterilant, uh, which is why that works pretty damn well to reduce the pain. Uh, I, I don't take testosterone 100 milligrams per milliliter. I, I, I do take testosterone propionate in, in sustenance, so phenylpropionate and regular propionate, um, 30 milligrams and 60 milligrams. So 90 milligrams of sustenance or of propionates are in one milliliter of sustenance 250. And then the rest, 160 milliliters or milligrams is, is uh, you know, long or medium acting steroids or testosterone. Um, yeah, I know that there's been some other guys too, like on like YouTube or various podcasts or whatever, who have said something about like mixing it with L-carnitine to dilute it, to dilute the test pro or, or whatever you're using. And there's no problem with that. You can do that if you want. There's a, uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. There's nothing wrong with diluting your gear. Uh, using sterile products. If you uh, mix gear with a water-based substance, though, like HCG, or if the L-carnitine was in um, was in oil, or sorry, if it was in water, if it was in water instead of oil, you would end up with a uh, a shitty situation uh, in the syringe where it looks ugly because the water and the oil don't mix, and so there's like bubbles of oil and bubbles of water, and it's a mess. But that ugly situation is not going to be something that you can't inject, okay? Because just because the oil and the water don't mix and doesn't look pretty, it doesn't mean that it won't mix in your muscle. It will mix in your muscle <laughs> and in your bloodstream. So while that may look gross, you know, everything that you put into the syringe was sterile. So you don't have to worry about, you know, unsterile things. Um, all right, next question from Damien. Hey, next question for your podcast was wondering about going off for three to four weeks, no pinning to make the body sensitive to androgens again, or is a cruise dose effective enough for this purpose if cruised for longer, maybe? Greetings from Belgium. Yeah, you know, going off for three or four weeks, it's more of a health thing uh, because when you go off for three or four weeks, uh, that's only really enough time for the stuff to drain out of your system. That's not enough time for the steroids that you were using to uh, like be gone from your body for a long time and be like having withdrawal to make you more sensitive or something like that. It's uh, it's it's not like that at all. Um, it, it's just lets the stuff that you've been on drain out of your system completely. And then after three or four weeks, you know, right when it's pretty much completely drained out, then you, you start again. Uh, I mean, it's good to come off. It's good to come off. And, um, you know, if the main thing is if you're healthy, if you have bad blood work, you won't respond as well to gear. Or if you're just unhealthy, you know, you have, you have a disease or you have some unhealthy organs, whatever, the gear won't work as well for you. Uh, so, so that, that's, you know, cruising or, or doing a cycling off, it's mostly for health reasons, not sensitivity reasons. That's kind of a myth, the sensitivity reasons, and it's mixed with being unhealthy. Like because people who have been on for long periods of time, you know, like years or whatever, uh, are, are going to be less healthy than, than uh, someone who, who, hasn't, who has been cycling off recently. Um, you know, people will kind of confuse that and say, oh, you know, they're desensitized because now that they're not healthy, they're not, you know, reacting to the steroids as well, not growing as much muscle, burning as much fat. And then they say, oh, you're desensitized. But it's not really like that. 
because the more steroids you take, the more androgen receptors you produce, and the lower your myostatin goes. So, like, all the muscle building, all the things that are, you know, uh, preventing muscle building, the more steroids you take, and the longer you take them, the more those things go down. Um, so, so it's... The, the gurus who have talked about that to g regain sensitivity, they, they're talking about like going off in order to make more gains and make your body function better, and that is correct, but it's not the sensitivity that went away that is causing that. You know, it, it's actually just not being healthy. Okay, next question from Frank. Love the podcast, and especially since I've been listening from pre to post COVID. Love the point of view from the places you were during them. I'm thinking of starting a 500 equipoise 750 test E cycle for 20 weeks. We'll run D ball at 25 milligrams for the first eight weeks for some muscle storage room. Was trying to find super draw but can't find it anywhere. Is there anything else you can recommend running with this? Looking to harden up a bit since my current cycle of trend test D ball and Winnie has gotten me to 217 from 205 with tons of strides and strength but still a lot of subcutaneous fat at 17% body fat. Uh, so you did test trend D-ball and, and gained, uh, looks like about uh, 12 pounds. Uh, that, that's good after, you know, the D-ball is out. Um, you know, I, I don't really recommend taking much else with it. You know, if you are looking to harden up a bit, I would recommend metformin because... The, the hardening up, it, it's it's really, it's just like body fat. And when you're using steroids and anabolics, there's this thing where like you want to recomp. But recomp doesn't work very well at all. Um, and unless you're a beginner. And even then, it doesn't work as good as you want it to. Um, and, and, and you you know, if you want to, to harden up, you have to cut your body weight. The actual weight on the scale of your body has to go down. And then if you're on steroids, that holds your muscle. So the, the weight as it's going down is, uh, it is water and fat instead of water, muscle and fat. Um, so you've got to get your, your weight moving back down on the scale, you know, from 217 down again in order to get that fat off. The metformin, uh, 2,000 milligrams a day, 1,000 milligrams morning, 1,000 milligrams at night, um, it will make it so that you absorb 30% less of the carbs you eat. Your muscles will gain a enhanced uh, carbohydrate fuel storage of 30%. So you'll be storing 30% more carbs in your muscles, which is it's an enormous uh, fuel storage increase, um, adding a third. Um, uh, it will also stop your liver from um, turning protein into carbohydrates. So that's a lot for fat burning. I, I mean... It, it's made it's made to help you tolerate glucose better. And what happens when you don't tolerate glucose good? Well, you get diabetes and you get fat. Uh, so as far as like body recomposition, something that has no negative health side effects and something that's not going to give you like any kind of stimulant effects, it's going to give you good muscle effects and good like fat burning effects, I would definitely go with metformin. I mean, your options other than that would be thyroid hormone, growth hormone, clenbuterol. Uh, growth hormone's expensive. Uh, thyroid hormone is pretty good. Thyroid hormone's pretty good. Um, but if you use T4, which is the inactive thyroid hormone, it's not very strong. Um, and if you use T3, then it's catabolic, which is the active hormone. Um, and then clenbuterol is very strong and it works very well. Um, it's the best fat burner, clenbuterol is. Um, but it, uh, makes you feel like shit. Okay. So when you use clenbuterol, you do not feel good. Uh, you can feel okay if you can get through two weeks on it, but I mean, two weeks of, of walking around mad all day, just angry for no reason all day that adds up in your psyche and, and, and can, uh, you know, really affect your, your mental state. Um, it, it's, it's not fun. Basically, what you, you've got to do, man, is, is you, you, you've got to cut down your carbs, okay? So what is what is uh, promoting your, your muscle, your muscle size and strength that you have? Well, muscle's made out of protein. 
So what, what do steroids do? They make it that so that you don't lose nitrogen uh, as much. And what is nitrogen? It's, it's protein. That's how protein is measured, okay? So you have nitrogen retention. How much nitrogen did you retain? How much protein did you keep in the body? What's your nitrogen balance? Are you, uh, are you putting in the same amount as you're putting out? That would mean you're making no gains. Are you putting out more than you're putting in? That means you're losing muscle. Are you putting in more than you're putting out? That means you're gaining muscle. You have got to put your protein high. Uh, got, I, you know, there's, there's myths because of being natural and how it doesn't work for bodybuilding that, you know, you don't need protein and, and you'll kind of notice that when you're natural, but when you're on steroids, that's the whole point of the medicine. That's the whole point of the steroid medicine is to make it so that the protein doesn't leave your body. So in order to, uh, create a better ratio on the input output of protein, you need to increase your protein intake, right? You've got a medicine that makes you hang on to protein and not lose it. So in order to make the most of that medicine, you need to put more protein into the body so that that medicine can then make you hold on to it and not excrete it like you normally would. So nitrogen retention, nitrogen storage, that means building muscle. Um, so the first thing you got to do when you're, when you're thinking about, you know, how am I going to lose the fat? You got to think, okay, well, I got to, I got to put a, the correct amount of protein in. If you're around 200 pounds, you need to eat uh, 300 grams of protein a day. If, or uh, 100 kilograms, 95 kilograms. You need to be eating 300 grams of protein per day. Come on, man. You're doing workouts. You're taking steroids. Uh, you're doing a lot of stuff, okay? It, there's a little job to put down the protein each day, 300 grams. If you do it, you will like it. What's one of the big differences between you and, and your steroid use and some of the other people that you see and you're thinking maybe you've megadosed maybe you've megadosed steroids and you're thinking well why 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 have i megadosed steroids but i haven't had the results that you know i thought i was going to get when i megadosed okay well you didn't put in the raw material you didn't put in the protein so the steroids had nothing to work with okay because steroids what they do is they make it so that you control what happens with your protein differently you store it so if you're not putting in enough protein to get that storage every day, storing up more and more and more every day, building up more and more muscle, well, you're not even using the steroids. The steroids don't have anything to work with. They can only manipulate what you, what happens with the raw material that you put in. Anyways, that's why it's so important that you eat more protein, okay? So 300 grams is like a minimum. You could be going four or 500 grams. You look at some of these like IFBB pros and stuff, you think they're eating 200 grams of protein? No, they're not. They're eating 400 grams. Some of them are eating 500 grams. You think they're eating 300? No, they're not. They're eating more than that. That's what I'm telling you. 300 is the minimum. People complaining about this a lot. A lot of people don't want to do this. It's come to my attention. You can always tell when, uh, when I'm talking to you guys on the podcast and I come up to something where I feel a little bit more motivated to talk about it. But the reason why when I get that way, like I'm more like into it, talking about it, is because I've noticed that it's a problem uh, that people have. It's something that's been recurring. I keep getting the questions, the same thing, or keep on getting the same attitude of like, I don't want to eat more protein. I will not eat more protein. You know, I'm, I'm not going to go to 250 grams. It's too hard. This, this is what I hear consistently. Um, so, so. You, you, you have that. After you have the protein down, then the, then the next thing, it's like your meals when you're dieting, they're going to be based around meat, okay? They're going to be based around meat and greens. And then, and you know, they're not going to be especially fatty, but they're not going to be absent of fat either, you know? So you have something like beef, you have something like fish, you have something like chicken, um, you have something like cottage cheese, um, uh, Greek yogurt, there, uh, eggs, egg whites, or egg egg white mix, okay? And then basically, so now you have your protein and your fat macros, you have one macro left and that's the carbs. And you just get to fill that up with enough carbs to make it so that you're continuing to lose weight and no more. Um, and you know, you want, the, you want to lose weight more? Well, you reduce the carbs because you already started with the minimum amount of uh, protein and fat. Protein is also thermogenic and it drives your metabolism. It makes your metabolism go faster. But yeah, you're just filling in 
uh, the last of the macros or calories that you can have and still lose weight uh, with the carbohydrates. And then as the diet goes on, really the only thing you need to do is um, subtract more carbohydrates from that. Um, the, yeah, so the next question is uh, from SS. Hey, Dan, a couple questions about cruising, if you don't mind. For cruising, I hear people say they take 250 milligrams of test and nothing else. This is consistent with what I read in your book, Ultimate Guide to Roids. And coming from you, I think what people say about cruising dosage is actually true. I went from bulking test 1 gram, DECA 600, D-Bolt 30 milligrams a day to TRT recently, and kept eating the same calories, 4,000. Second week into TRT, I already lost 6 pounds, and my squat dropped from 295 to 255 in the same rep range. And then it says, please don't judge me. You know, that's a little more extreme than usual, but but yeah, okay. Um, this kind of sudden drop is something you would expect. Any suggestions to minimize the loss during cruising? One thought I have based on this experience is to always do bulking and TRT back to back and make my TRT phase a part of the extended bulking and keep eating high calories to minimize the loss. Yeah, if you are dieting and you're not on cycle and you have built up a significant amount of steroid muscle uh, and, and you're on a, on a cruise, you will lose a ton of muscle, okay? The only reason that muscle is on your body is because you have the prerequisite of the chemicals, the hormones in your body. And if those hormones aren't there and now you start, uh, so now you don't have the nitrogen, you don't have the protein uh, retention ability there, the effect there, and now you take away uh, more nitrogen, more calories, you take that away to do dieting, um, you know, it's going to start being, you know, how much protein did you put in and how much protein did you lose? Well, now you don't have the steroids uh, preventing you from losing that protein. And so your nitrogen retention goes negative. You're losing protein every day. And you're, that means you're losing muscle mass every day. So, you know, uh, I'm going to get to the next part of your question, okay? Because you have question two, but it's kind of the same as question one. In one of the podcasts, I think you mentioned to do 500 milligrams for cruising. What is the upper range of cruising you've seen? Hurry, understand it may not be a TRT dose anymore. I believe the purpose of cruising is to clear my system and to maintain sensitivity of hormones. But one thing I'm still not sure is if a higher dosage will still allow people to achieve that versus not. Well, okay. So luckily we, we went over the part where the sensitivity thing is a myth. Um, because it's actually the opposite. The more steroid hormones and bodybuilding hormones you take, the lower your myostatin goes and the more androgen receptors and sensitive to steroids you become. It's definitely not like a recreational substance where it's the opposite. Um, you know, 500 milligrams for a cruise, bigger guys absolutely will do 500 milligrams for a cruise. That's not uncommon at all. Um, you know, Doing, doing high dosages for a cruise, people say cruise, you know, then you have these people on the internet, these people on the forums that then say like, you did 200 milligrams, it's 125 milligrams. And then I'm like, oh yeah, but what about all these TRT doctors in America that I know and speak with who prescribe their patients indefinitely 400 milligrams of testosterone, 200 milligrams DECA. And, uh, you know, some anadrol and, and, and human growth hormone, because there are doctors who do that. And you have these idiots on the Internet saying that, that that's not happening. It's just because they're beginners. Don't list. Don't read forums. Forum information is totally garbage. Um, you know, as far as the studies go on testosterone dosage, it anywhere up to 600 milligrams of testosterone long-term does not negatively affect your blood work except for cholesterol in about half of people and um that that's been studied in 20 week continuous use any dosage under 600 milligrams up to 600 milligrams they didn't test higher but i can tell you with a lot of people that do do higher um their blood work doesn't go bad some of it does for some people um but it's not you know taking a 
what do you do in bodybuilding? You know, do you want to be going up and down all the time or, or do you want to go up and then take some time flat and then up again? You know, I'm just like different people have different styles. Some people don't cruise. Some people just stay on something. They have a hormone protocol that they use. They stay on it. They don't come off. So, you know, that could be something like a thousand milligrams testosterone. That's just what they take. They don't ever go off. They don't ever take other stuff. They just take a thousand milligrams of testosterone. Uh, you know, another guy, you know, it might be 400 milligrams of testosterone and 400 milligrams of primobolin or 20 milligrams of Anavar, 400 milligrams testosterone, something like that. You know, I think that a reasonable cruise, I don't think you should be taking other chemicals, other steroids during your cruise, because the point of the cruise is to get your health back to 100%. It's not the sensitivity thing. Okay, so I think that since testosterone um, and growth hormone are both the natural hormones that do not cause bad things to happen to your blood work, um, and you can be 100% healthy on them, uh, according to your blood work, this is what you should use for a cruise. Only testosterone and growth hormone. With growth hormone, you know, do a replacement dosage that you could be prescribed for TRT. So two I use uh, or none. And with testosterone, choose somewhere between 100 milligrams to 600 milligrams per week. If you've got more steroid muscle on you, then you're going to need more because that muscle has to have hormones in order to exist. And, you know, you won't even be able to fuel storage that muscle up the way that it's supposed to be, which it kind of sounds like that's what happened to you here. You know, you, you said you had a major drop in strength, uh, you know, within weeks after coming on the cruise. You know, it looks like you have steroid muscle built up that must have hormones in order to suffice itself. And if you don't have those hormones, now those muscles don't even have the uh, chemical requirement in order to fuel storage them and make them function normally. So you're losing massive amounts of strength. You know, that's my spiel on TRT. Paul asks, hey, Dan, I bought the ultimate guide to roids and thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm 51 and basically doing self-guided TRT, a trailblazer here, an adventurer. I started out using 300 DECA and 300 test SIP for eight weeks, then taking eight weeks off. That worked out well. Nice. No negative side effects to speak of. Uh, good, good. So you're not uh, uh, too much too much having problems with prolactin. Uh, but the amount of size and strength I gained drove me to try to find out how much is too much. Okay, so 300 DECA, 300 test, you didn't gain as much size and strength as you wanted. So you tried more. He says, so I tried 450 DECA and 450 test a week and ended up with DECA dick, premature ejaculation, emotional problems, losing my shit over nothing, and a bunch of back acne. Damn. <laughs> that sucks, man. So you just increased the dosage, 150 milligrams of each of test and DECA, and it gave you DECA dick. And I mean, how does that even happen? You know, DECA dick, but premature ejaculation at the same time. So you can't even get an erection. But then as soon as it does get like a half erect or something, you're just uh, shooting your load or something. I, I'm trying to imagine what that would be. Uh, sounds not fun. Uh, the obvious solution was to stop running so much gear, so I did. I'm now on 200 milligrams a week of doctor prescribed tessipunate. And all those negative side effects are back to normal except for the acne. My doctor is not really that well educated about hormones, so I'm hoping you can fig help me figure out the solution might be. Uh, well, yeah, so... With the with the deca dig and what, if you're using 19 nors at some point at some dosage for most people at any dosage, but for some people they can tolerate up to a certain amount. You're gonna need to run cabergolin. Uh, if you don't, then your prolactin is gonna rise up, and your um, your sex function is going to be in the same chemical state. As when you've just uh, finished having sex, you came, and now you can't get an erection again, and you have no interest mentally. Because that's because after you finish having sex, uh, your prolactin rises as a response to an orgasm instantly. And so that's actually the same effect as you would get from Trend or Deca. 
but with Trend or Deca, you get that same thing happening to your brain all, all the time, always, never goes away unless you use Cabergoin with it. So that that's why, you know, it's like, if you're going to use Deca and Trend, you at least have to keep the Cabergoin on hand. Um, you know, you, you need to balance your levels with your doctor. You know, you're, you're having, you're having acne and stuff still. You need to check out your estrogen, see if that's in range. Cause that's going to be the first thing right there. Uh, and then the other thing is that it's possible that you just don't do well, um, with DECA, you know, the first time eight weeks, you might've got lucky. And now this time you didn't. And now that that DECA is in your system, it's messing with you. Because those metabolites don't go away for six months, 12 months, 18 months. Those breakdown products of DECA, it's extremely long acting and can be caught on a drug test one and a half years after your last shot. So that means that there's still stuff, hormonal byproducts in your body one and a half years after taking it that are causing effects that can be detected. That, that you know, use Cabergolin. If you use Cabergolin uh, with Deca and Trenbolone, you know, they're not going to be severe side effect hormones. Um, sit, provided you keep the dosage under 500 milligrams a week. They, the, the side effects are not going to be something that cannot be controlled. Um, you, you know, I, I don't think that you should use those hormones, though. I think that you should use easy to use hormones that, that don't cause side effects. So, you know, testosterone and primobolin instead of testosterone and DECA. Uh, testosterone and Winstrol instead of testosterone and DECA. Even testosterone and Anadrol instead of testosterone and DECA. You know, just plug and play stuff that doesn't require any extra medications to be on. Steroids that don't have any female hormone problems. Winstrol, Primobolin, Anavar, um, Anadrol, um, Superdrol, uh, don't have uh, any estrogen or female hormone effects. Masteron doesn't either, but Masteron causes side effects. Uh, it causes a lot of acne. It's the one male steroid that you know doesn't have any female hormone effects, but causes a lot of acne, causes a lot of prostate issues. Uh, causes you to become addicted to masturbating. Uh, okay. Next question. Chris asks, Hey Dan, found your podcast on accident while looking for info on different AAS stacks, anabolic androgenic steroids. I've been listening to it in the truck at work for over a month now. Also decided to buy your book to support the content. Great info in there as well. Ultimate Guide to Roids. 109 page ebook by Dan the Bodybuilder from Thailand. My questions are, I started out powerlifting and did the typical, I can eat shit and get strong routine. I bet that worked. He says, I got strong, but obese. I was 310 pounds last year and cut naturally to 230 by just eating the bro diet. I'd like to now get shredded and then bulk like a mofo. When you do bulk though, bulk on the bro diet. That way you won't get fat again. Uh... I've gone over and over my stack choices and come up with this 12 weeks, one gram testosterone, 600 gram, uh, milligrams, tetran and anthe may bump to 800. If I feel okay, 750 milligrams, uh, masteron and anthe 50 milligrams, uh, Anavar every day, uh, eight weeks on the back end. How does this look? Should I change anything? Um, I'd also like the bulk. Okay. I'm going to leave the bulking part of your question out because it's completely separate you know there's too many cycles we're only going to think about one cycle right now okay so looking at your cycle the trend balone will help you cut the fat yes trend balone and anthate's okay if you've used trend balone acetate already and you know that you handle trend well the reason why is because if you don't handle trend well and you're having problems then you can't get it out of your system for months if it's trend and anthate you know, it may not be, you know, if you stop taking it, you may not feel back to normal really for like eight weeks. Whereas with acetate, you're talking more like 
five days, ten days, you know, maximum three weeks. So uh, make sure that if you're going to use an anthate, you already have experience with Trend and it's fine for you. Uh, the one gram test, that was good. That's the bodybuilding dosage of test. One gram plus. You have to reach a gram. You want to be a bodybuilder? You've got to take a gram of testosterone. As soon as you do it, you'll know why I say this. Uh, the Mastron and Anthate, it's not really a good fat burner. Uh, you know, people say that Mastron is a good fat burner, but it's not really. What Mastron does is it gives you this really thick oil on the top of your skin that you normally wouldn't have there, which when it gets wet or sweaty, it makes you really shiny and you look good. And it also makes it so that the water in your muscle and the water in your skin gets reduced. So what you end up looking like is like a slightly smaller, more dense, athletic version of what you looked like before taking it. And it doesn't really have any fat burning qualities. I know people say it does, but it doesn't. Main reason why is because it doesn't affect nutrient partitioning. Um, there's no like carbohydrate fuel storage effects of Mastron at all. Zero. Other thing with Mastron is that Ananthate sucks. Uh, propionate is so much better. The Ananthate, it's like, am I even taking anything? You don't even know if you're taking anything. And so uh, it's it's uh, pretty asinine. And uh, But the propionate, I mean, you take that shit, you take a 100 milligram injection, in two days, you know you're taking something. It's like a completely different hormone. Uh, it's so much more able to see, oh, these are the effects of Mastron. Mastron and Anthate is like, am I even taking anything? Mastron propionate is like, I am fucking taking something. Um, so, yeah, a lot of prostate issues with Mastron, too, especially high dosage like that, 750. I'd be careful with Mastron. I'm not a Mastron fan, but I've used it. Definitely have used it, um, you know, few, enough cycles. Know all about it and what it's like. But, uh, and, and a lot of people, you know, back when I was first getting into Primobol and, and kind of like saying like, hey, Primobol is great. You know, people would be like, no, Mastron's great. <laughs> like, no, no, Mastron is shit. Primobol is great. <laughs> Mastron doesn't build muscle. Mastron doesn't build fat. It makes your sex drive insane. It makes you a little bit stronger. It makes you get a, a thick oil slick on the tip on the top of your skin. Uh, it makes you get acne. It makes your prostate swollen, and it makes you masturbate too much. Um, yeah, that that's pretty much what I have to say. Uh, if you want to, uh, again, to it as well. If you, you want to get cut. I would, and, and you're naturally a big guy, a heavy guy, you know, you've been 300 pounds. You would do well with metformin because that helps you lose weight, taking metformin. Okay. Next question. Okay, this one's from Mike. I made a, a post about if you're really big, uh, you don't need to wear tight clothes, and you don't even want to wear tight clothes. Um, and I made this post on Instagram, and this guy, Mike, he replied to it, okay? Uh, he says, well, I understand why you would say that. I'm not a bodybuilder, although I have been blasting and cruising this year. Body has developed more this year than it ever did naturally. I'm pretty fit and look good for 44 years old. Before my body looked like a turd, I actually like wearing tight shirts, but I describe them more as fitting than anything. I look good and proud of my progress. It doesn't bother me what people think. I'm definitely not offended by you. I like you and your podcast. Um, there's nothing you could say that would stop me from following you on the podcast. Thanks. And, uh, you know, if you want to wear tight clothes, just think of, you know, that Instagram post that I made as more of me just, uh, you know, teasing you a little bit, you know, teasing you. I, I don't actually think you're a stupid idiot if you wore tight clothes. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I don't give a fuck. Actually, uh, you know, it, 
that's cool if you want to wear tight clothes, but I don't do it. And um, let me just tell you personally why I don't, uh, because it's too much. And the reason why I made this post in the first place is because there was this advertisement on Instagram, like advertising, like, oh, transforms your chest, makes your, and then it had like an arrow pointing to the shoulders and it's like shows hard earned gains. And then it like points an arrow to the waist and it slims your waist. What kind of consumerism is that, man? Like, like, you know, I thought that you were trying to make this for real with bodybuilding. And now they're just trying to sell you some fucking clothes that's going to like buy you the body without any work. Yeah, you know, that's kind of like what they're advertising, saying, oh, you're going to be this. And this is the other thing, too, is that real guys who are actually big, they don't need to do any of that. OK, you you wear a regular loose T-shirt and everybody sees your traps, your shoulders, your lats, your chest. You're big. And the first thing that everybody sees, anyone who sees you, the first thing that comes across their mind, any stranger, the first thing when they see you is that's a bodybuilder. That guy goes to the gym. That guy lifts weights. So you don't need to have that try hard approach anymore that like you, you may have done in college or whatever, you know, where you're wearing all this tight clothes around to try and be like, look at me, I'm muscular. Everyone already knows. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to wear tight clothes. You know, it makes you look like you're trying really hard. Uh, yeah, and that's what what I was trying to say. That and the consumerism thing. Um, and then the other thing too is that it's too much. So if you if if there's a bunch of people and they're they're all dressed normally, um, and then you're like different, like you're big and in regular clothes, you're just normally too, and they can all see that you have muscle and you're different than everyone else. You know what is the need to 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 then to then take your clothes off or whatever? Or, or wear these super tight clothes and just be like screaming at everyone about it, you know? You know, you know, like Arnold didn't wear tight clothes. Neither did any of the Golden Era guys. They all wore loose, normal clothes, regular person clothes. And, uh, you know, I think that's good. For me, I, I think that's good. Uh, I think it's good to, uh, you don't want so much attention. Once, once you're big enough that everyone... Everywhere you go, the first thing they think when they see you is, that's a bodybuilder, that guy lifts weights, that guy goes to the gym. You won't, you won't want the attention anymore that uh, wearing really tight shit gives you. Uh, you, you know, you, you will be getting enough attention. You won't want uh, that attention. And, and, and it also makes you look try hard. And when you go places... It's going to be screaming at the turds, the turds that go to these places that want to find someone like you and challenge you and, and you know, prove what a, a badass they are because they, they're, they're being a dick to the muscle guy, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of negative things that can happen from wearing a shit too tight. Anyways, I'm over it. I'm over that one. That was a funny, that was a funny question. Um, all right, next, uh, next, um, question is from Kina asks, I've been following your podcast for over a year and thought I would be on steroids for a long period in my life. I meet a girl and I want to quit gear. Oh, so I guess that the reason that you thought you were going to be on long, on steroids for a long time was because you thought that you needed steroids to get a girl. You don't, you do not need steroids to get a girl or I mean, will steroids help you get girls? Yes. Um, they'll get your foot in the door, uh, but not that much, not that much. And also, uh, when people ask me, like, uh, you know, should I take steroids? And I'm like, it's a hassle. And it's like, well, why do you want to do it? And it's like, well, because I've been going to the gym for the last five years, the last 10 years, whatever. And, you know, I, I've always wanted to be a bodybuilder, but I can't can't get it because you know it's not possible without the steroids so, yeah okay go ahead and take steroids sounds like you're going to be doing a lot more bodybuilding but they're like i want to be cool i want you know why, why do i want to take steroids because i want people to think i'm cool and i want people to think that i'm badass and that i'm better than other people because my body has capabilities of being this big muscular god and they don't so it's like i'm superior and they're below that's a really gay that's a really stupid reason that's a really stupid reason to take steroids, okay? And 
you, you, you shouldn't do that. That's dumb. Um, anyways, uh, did a bad injection that also made me cough and feel like shit. Okay, so it dripped into your vein. You know, you, you cut a vein with the needle when you went in, and then uh, the steroid had direct access to your bloodstream. So then once it got into your bloodstream, um, you know, a few drops of it, then it, you know, went through your heart, lung, oxygen, blood exchange, and was expelled through your alveoli in your lungs. Um, and that's what gives you the cough uh, or, you know, with normal gear and give, gives you that uh, kind of choking feeling. That can happen. Uh, so I guess that's this scared you. You know, you had some things that scared you. Did inject 300 milligrams DECA today. the next thing this guy says after all this stuff about meta girl want to quit gear thought he's going to be on a long time then he had a bad shot and then he says did inject 300 milligrams decade today and then he says how do i do the pct now been reading on the internet and everyone is saying different stuff i don't like to inject stuff anymore but if i have to i could would appreciate your help greetings from sweden i think he's a cool guy he's just he's just experimenting so He's, he's probably kind of on the younger side, and he's experimenting with what he wants. Okay, so so now you want to – it's funny you took DECA today, though. Uh, if you want to do the PCT, the simplest, easiest PCT that um, is is in no injections is taking one tablet of Novadex for a long time. So if you've been on DECA, for example, you're going to need to take it for a while, like two months. You know, 20 milligrams Novadex per day. Um Normally with PCTs, what I recommend people do is, is HCG for about six weeks at um, 1,500 IUs a day, which is an injection into the skin, um, with Nolvidex being ran 20 milligrams a day along with that. And then a lot of times actually extending the Nolvidex too, you know, extending it another two weeks past the HCG. You know, it really doesn't matter. You've got to be at least doing the PCT for a month. If you do it for shorter than that, you're going to shut down again as soon as you stop taking the PCT meds. So you got to do it a month or longer. And depending on what you took and how long you took it is going to be the factor that decides how long you need to be taking your PCT for. For If you took something like DECA, which has long-acting metabolites in your body, it after you stop taking the DECA, it's still in your body for months. And it's still going to be sending that signal to your brain, your hypothalamus, that says, hey, there are hormones in the body. We don't need to produce more. So do not release gonadotropin releasing hormone and do not release luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. And the testicles are going to stay shrunk and they're not going to be creating more hormones. So that's why you'd need to do a, a longer term PCT. Um, if you just if you've been taking DECA and then you just want to like come off like a four week PCT is not going to work. Uh, you're going to have low testosterone unless you keep continue the PCT. You know, I'd say at least at least eight weeks. Okay, Vikram asks, would you still see merit in running metformin, giving that my blood glucose levels are already in a good place to begin with? Say seventy five. Uh, milligrams per deciliter fasted. Yeah, metformin won't actually drop your blood sugar. So it's it's not a um, a hypoglycemic agent like uh, like insulin is. You can take metformin, but it won't make your blood sugar go down. Uh, what metformin does is in, it, it makes it so that you handle sugars better, which then makes it so that your, your blood sugar doesn't get high, okay? So diabetes is when you have high blood sugar all the time uh, and it doesn't go down. And the metformin will, will make it so that your body is able to handle the blood sugar better, more normally, um, and or, or change what happens with the sugar that's put in your blood from storing it in fat to putting it instead in muscle tissue. Um, and also the protein not turning it into glucose. So yes, absolutely. As a as a fat loss agent, as a body recomposition agent, yes, metformin is good even if your blood glucose is low. And then the other time that it could be good 
is if you were using any dosage of pharmaceutical grade growth hormone um, and, and you were bulking. So, you know, even just two IUs of pharmaceutical grade growth hormone uh, and then adding in the metformin, uh, it really pumps you up. You, you look way bigger, almost like you're using insulin um, because it increases your insulin sensitivity so much in the muscles. You know, people that use insulin too, they, they use metformin with the insulin and the growth hormone. So it's kind of like an intermediate step between, you know, before some, if somebody doesn't want to use insulin, but they still want to have some of that modern bodybuilding look or really square roundish 3D muscles that kind of like go off the body. They're, they're not just like a, a straight look up and down the body, but it's like all these lumps and shit, you know, where each muscle is each muscle belly, then metformin is going to help you with that. Um, okay. And the next question, Stutka, Stutska, Stuxa asks, was wondering, I'm currently using TRT dose 250 milligrams to sit per week. I want to convert to test propionate. However, I see that it comes in at 100 milligrams per milliliter versus test C at 250 milligrams per milliliter. Is the test prop stronger per, milli per milligram? Is 250 pro the same as 250 sipionate? Okay, so the first thing is that 100 milligrams of propionate contains about 15 milligrams. Don't, don't, I'm not saying this, okay? So the guys who are going to go Google right now and look up exactly what the milligram and ester weight is, okay? I'm not trying to prove to you that I'm looking at Google right now, okay? I'm just using this information off the top of my head. So I'm within like plus or minus five milligrams, okay? So throw me a bone. Uh, so it's about 85 milligrams, 90 milligrams of testosterone for 100 milligrams of testosterone propionate. The other 15, 10, 20, whatever um, milligrams is, is propionate, the ester weight. Uh, with testosterone, it's about 70 milligrams per 100 milligrams of testosterone. And the 30 milligrams is then um, sipionate. Uh, so yes, per 100 milligrams, uh, testosterone propionate is stronger than testosterone uh, sipionate. So something like 500 milligrams of test propionate would be equal in strength to like 650 or 700 milligrams sipionate. But um, 100 milligrams of propionate versus test C at 250 milligrams is not as strong. No, you, you would have to use more, um, more milliliters. You know, if you're, that's just a general rule. If, you, if you're using uh, uh, fast acting steroids, you have to use more milliliters per week. Uh, slow acting steroids contain more milligrams per milliliter. All right. And, uh, the last question of the day, Newsom asks, so I've been blasting and cruising here and there for the last year and a half and currently blasting Sustanon 300 and Anadrol 50 milligrams a day. I'm going to add in another compound like Primobolin at the four to 500 range for the week. And the Sustanon 300, I think he's saying he's taking that per week. I've never experienced any problems with gyno or low energy or fatigue. I hear and see from your podcast how many people come into problems with the estrogen. I've had Clomid and Nolva and AI on hand for the last year and a half, but haven't needed anything. Why is this? And is there something that my body is doing that is enabling me to have very little to no sides? Sides from the standard hair growth and a pimple here and there. Pumps have been freaky lately. It's been nice. I have no problems with my nipples. Uh, so, okay, yeah, he's just asking, you know, why? Why, why do people have so much problems with estrogen? And, and then he can't relate to that because he doesn't. First thing is that you're only using 300 milligrams of Sustanon per week. It's a very low dosage of testosterone, 300 milligrams per week um, for, for bodybuilding. Um, you know, all the other hormones that you take are going to work better and do their job at lower dosages if the testosterone is higher. So that's the reason why the testosterone is usually run higher. And also you'll just be bigger and stronger on higher dose testosterone. Um, it has abilities that other hormones don't have at making you big. Um, D-ball, DECA, and testosterone, it's three hormones that have this ability to make you 
very big that the other hormones do not have. So you, one of those three, you have to run it at a, at a pretty good dosage if you want to like look like a bodybuilder. And then you can run the other things too. Um, okay, so that's the first thing is that Sustanon 300, you're not going to be getting many estrogen effects. Um, you know, at 500 milligrams, you'd start use, needing to use a little bit of Nulva or a little bit of AI like Arimidex or Examestane. But I'm going to tell you one thing here is that, you know, I, I talk with a lot of you guys who listen to podcasts, you know, I'll either do a phone call with you or, you know, they're signed up to do uh, text messaging on WhatsApp with me. And uh, then also, you know, just from my experience doing bodybuilding for years and talking with steroid users, if there is one thing that has a large amount of variance or it's not the same between person to person, it's the estrogen production on steroids, okay? So we know that 600 milligrams of testosterone per week has a certain amount on muscle weight, okay? Like the dosage, the milligrams of steroids per week has a direct effect in humans on how much muscle and strength that they have, okay? Um, and, and we know that from, from doing experiments with different dosages and seeing, oh, hey, all the guys that are on this dosage have this amount of muscle increase and this amount of strength increase. And then here's like the range, you know, they're all within this certain range that's pretty close, you know, all having pretty much the same effects. There's some uh, outliers a little bit. Um, but with the, uh, estrogen, it is totally not that way. Um, the, you know, one guy might take 500 milligrams of testosterone a week and he might actually need to take one milligram of Arimidex every day. I have guys like this, um, that if they don't, they will get gyno, uh, because they produce a massive amount of estrogen from testosterone. And I know other guys that can take 5,000 milligrams of testosterone per week, so 10 times that dosage, and they do not need to take an AI ever, and they won't get gyno. So the amount of estrogen that one guy creates versus the amount that another guy creates from the same amount of steroids is such a huge margin and totally not just something that can just be said, like, okay, you know, here's your steroid dosage and here's your AI dosage. That doesn't work. One of the most important parts about taking steroids and feeling good on steroids is figuring out how much estrogen your body produces from testosterone. How does your body produce estrogen from testosterone? There's an enzyme called the aromatase enzyme, floats around in your blood, and it's attracted to uh, testosterone. When it interacts with testosterone, it binds to the molecule and transforms the molecule into estrogen. So the aromatase enzyme binds to the testosterone molecule and transforms it into estrogen. That's how males get their estrogen. Um, so how much aromatase enzyme does your body produce? Well, that's very genetically uh, influenced. So one guy may produce enormous amounts of aromatase enzyme or just, you know, a higher amount, whereas another guy basically produces zero. Um, you know, I'd say what's on average is for, you know, we gave this, uh, example before 500 milligrams per week test on average, somebody needs to take like a half milligram of Arimidex three times a week. That would be like the average guy, but using that as a cookie cutter dosage and saying, Oh, you're on 500 milligrams test per week. So you should take half milligram of Arimidex three times a week. It, it's, it's like there's because of the extreme variance in estrogen production from person to person, that statement is just like insane to, to tell them to, to take a certain amount of Arimidex. You, you need to take it. What makes your body feel good and what makes you not have side effects, what makes your sex drive work good, which makes your prostate not go big, which makes, <laughs> which makes your, oh, uh, which, which <laughs> Which makes you not get gyno, okay? So this is going to be very different for some guys and others. And Newsome, this is the case with you. You're not a big aromatizer. Your body doesn't produce much aromatase enzyme. So when you 
put more and more steroids in, there's really just no aromatase enzyme in to t- convert it into estrogen. Whereas another guy, you know, he, he may be producing a ton of, uh, or, you know, a good amount of aromatase enzyme. And as he puts in more and more testosterone in, there's more and more raw material for that aromatase enzyme to transform into estrogen. So he gets worse and worse estrogen side effects. Don't worry. You're totally normal. If you would like your questions to be answered on the steroids podcast, go to steroidspodcast.com and leave a comment with your questions or email or private message steroidspodcast at gmail.com or steroidspodcast on Instagram. Until next time.